Would you like to improve your game this year but aren't quite sure how to go about it? Well these five tests can show you what you're doing well, what you're struggling with and what you need to do to improve. Every single one of them will help with your queuing in a different way, but how exactly do they work? One of the most difficult things to know when a shot goes wrong is why you missed it. Did you see the shot incorrectly or is the miss a result of bad queuing? But when you have a straight shot at least you know you're going to line it up right. Or do you? Playing a straight shot can be harder than you think because it's difficult to see exactly where the centre of the object ball is at all times. So how can you test that you're seeing the centre of the object ball? Well this is how with what I've got set up right here. What I've got is two pieces of paper blocking off everything except for the middle centimetre of the red. Just a little bit more than I need to be able to see in order to pot it. So I've got a guide of where to hit the red. Now the first time it's a little bit fiddly to set up and get both of those pieces of paper exactly in the right place. But the great thing about it is the second time, all you've got to do is respot the red. And this just keeps working and it actually makes the shot so much easier to play because you can see exactly where you need to hit it. So you're more likely to pop the ball. All you need is something to prop the paper up with, like ball boxes, trays, or even some books. After that, all there's really left to do is to line the cue ball up straight. And that's easier than normal because you can just look for the gap between the paper and see where straight is. This tests your sighting by eliminating it. You know you're going to be aiming for the right place on the object ball. But don't be fooled, these shots are still missable. Just because you're aiming for the right place, there's no guarantee you're going to hit it. It doesn't really tell you how well you're delivering the cue. But don't worry, because for that, I've got another solution. But before we look at that, let's catch up with Cosmin in Timisoara, Romania, which is about there. So I'm now going to be testing how accurately I can play the shot, once again with a dead straight pop. But this time, I'm going to be introducing two extra cues. I first need to get them in exactly the right place, so I'm using the cue ball to measure. What I've now got is two cues that are exactly a cue ball's width apart, pointing directly towards the corner pocket. So in theory, if I play this shot absolutely dead straight, I won't touch either cue. Now that very slightly touched the left hand cue, so I can see I didn't quite catch the red perfectly straight. I hit it a little bit to the left. But the good news is, it's incredibly easy to line up again, just by moving the cues like that. I can just bring the cue ball back gently, not nudging the cues at all. And I can have another go and see how well I do it this time. Normally the shot itself wouldn't be that difficult, but if I want to avoid both the cues, then I'm going to have to play it perfectly straight. It's easy to see which cue you're hitting and it forces you to be more accurate than you normally would be on a shot of a lot greater difficulty. And you will still miss the pot if you hit the cue ball wide like you normally would. The cues don't guide the cue ball onto the potting angle for the red. But what happens if you're not playing a straight shot? So here's a great way to practice cutting the ball. Place the red on the top cushion. I haven't done that in a while. And the white somewhere in the D. And then this one's the simplest one of the lot so far. You just want to try and cut the red as thin as possible. And you want to try this on both sides of the table because it's no good just being able to cut the ball one way. So do you want to put the cue ball as wide as possible in the D? Well not really because you don't want to put it where the spot is because there might be a little bit of a hole and that could cause the cue ball to jump off line. But you do want it about as close as you can get. Your goal should be to try to play the shot thin enough to get the cue ball in and out of bulk without touching the side cushion. Not only is this a great way to practice playing safe, but it'll also help you understand the width of a cue ball, which will help you line up all the thinner shots you want to play. 
Playing a thin shot on a ball tight to the cushion like this is probably one of the most challenging shots in the game. And when you try this, it's more than likely you're going to miss the ball altogether a few times on the way to improving. But if you're really playing well, then you're going to be able to get the cue ball back to the top cushion without going near the sides of the table. But what if you're unable to get a thin contact like that because you're unable to push the cue through straight enough? But before that, let's just find a Rajel from Himachal, India, which is there. How can you test your pushing your cue through exactly straight? Well, what if you only give yourself the bare minimum room you need in order to play a shot like that? I've lined up what would ordinarily be a shot that's as unmissable as it gets. I can strike the centre of the cue ball here, but I can only just get to it past the yellow and the red. Honestly, you don't want the balls to be that close together. You want it to be about a couple of times the width of your tip. Because if it's too tight, that's not going to make you more accurate. It just means you're not going to be able to see what's going on. And of course, like this, anybody could probably play the shot at a slow speed. The trick is to just keep increasing the power until something does go wrong. So I'm trying to pop the red normally here without disturbing either ball with my cue. But what does it mean if one of the balls does move? Don't assume your arm's in the wrong position and hasn't pushed the cue through straight because that's rarely the problem. It's usually a little bit more simple than that. It's more likely to be caused by your cue action being jerky or stressed. And if you practice this enough, eventually you'll be able to see what goes wrong when you're playing a shot under pressure? What moves? Because if you understand that, you're going to be more relaxed about playing in these situations. What went wrong there is I just tensed up a little bit as I played the shot. And I'm sure if I played it relaxed at the same speed, then I wouldn't have caught the yellow at all. It shows you exactly what you're doing wrong. But what if you think you're doing everything right? Can you test if you're cueing the ball exactly straight. Well you can, with the final challenge. I've shown you how to test you're seeing the shot correctly. I've shown you how to test you're hitting it straight. I've shown you how to test your ability to play a shot thin. I've even shown you a way to test that you're pushing the cue through straight. But this is how you see if all of that is working. All you need is a ball on the pink spot and the white up here near the brown spot. Double kisses in snooker are almost always a bad thing, but here that's the very shot we're trying to play. But it's not as easy as you might think. In fact, it really isn't easy at all, and it may take you quite a few shots before you even get one double kiss. Practice this enough and you'll begin to feel a lot more confident about playing the shot the way you intend. And once you can play it slow, you can begin to play it harder. And then try getting a double kiss when playing a stun shot. If you're really confident, you can even try screwing the cue ball back. Although from this distance, that might not be for everybody. But what happens if we replace the regular snooker ball I was using as an object ball with this lightweight one? Because it's so light, it doesn't stop the cue ball from striking the top cushion. And when it does, it means you can see what side spin, if any, you've put on the cue ball. These lightweight snooker balls come as a pair, and there's lots of different tricks you can play with both of them. And you can find out exactly how to do that in this video. Or find out how to use these random objects as training aids. And remember, don't just watch, play. And make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel. And visit the website. See you later.